Hi there, this is Future Tech. Welcome to my review of the Dell Inspiron 15 3521. This is a budget laptop with a standard HD TN screen, an Intel Celeron N2830, which is one of the lowest uh, power CPUs available. And it's available for only £199 or $249 in the US. So it's one of the cheapest laptops you can buy, but is it worth your cash? Taking a look around the laptop, we can see that it's covered in a sort of honeycomb textured plastic, which is actually fairly resistant to fingerprints. It doesn't exactly feel like the most high quality material, but then it is not a premium laptop. On the bottom, uh, you'll find a battery cover, a flap for changing the hard drive and RAM, which is always something good to have. On the left side is a power supply socket. A fan vent, though no fan is actually installed since the laptop stays cool without it. Uh, moving on, an HDMI port for plugging in an external display and two USB 2 ports. There are no 3.0 ports. On the front, a memory card slot. And on the right side, there is nothing apart from a Kensington lock. There is no CD drive on this particular model, and as far as I know, you can't store your own. The trackpad is quite large and the clicky buttons are good but quite loud. The keyboard is sort of average chiclet style keyboard and it doesn't have too much flex. The only LEDs are the low battery light and charging light and the caps lock which works the way it should. As you can see, clearly removing extra LEDs was done to reduce the cost. The screen is just okay, average for a TN panel, which is what you'll find on laptops even twice the price. So for everyday use, the colors are acceptable. As you'll see with this trailer, the screen is quite reflective in bright light. And sound quality is acceptable and surprisingly loud. On to web browsing, uh, it's pretty much what you'll expect for the price you're paying. It, it won't blow you away, but it isn't too bad. I mean, remember that the page I'm loading now, The Verge, is actually quite a heavy website, so even you know more expensive laptops would struggle in some senses. But it'll do the job for basic web browsing. You know what you'd expect, as I said. The typing experience is quite good. For in my opinion at least, with keys, you know, the keys on the keyboard have plenty of travel, which is something you'll sometimes find lacking, especially on cheaper laptops, though also on high-end Ultrabooks. Uh, the spacebar could be slightly more responsive though, but again, that's just my opinion. As you can see here, there's more than enough power for, you know, word processing, PowerPoints, anything basic, as well as maybe a bit of Photoshop too. There are a number of uh, touchpad gestures available here that are similar to the ones you might find on the Apple Mac. Instead of being incorporated into Windows 8.1, they're uh, part of a Dell touchpad application, which you can you can tell, especially by the fact that the touch gestures won't actually work as soon as you boot the laptop up. It will take a few minutes, you know, while the application loads in the background. Battery life is around five to six hours, which is pretty good. And looking at some benchmarks, we'll see that we achieved 678.5 milliseconds in SunSpider and a single core score of 880 and a multi core score of 1549 in Geekbench 3. Now for gaming. Well, it's enough to say this is not a gaming PC by any means, but you know, you could expect to play sort of. Windows 8 games and a few a few basic old PC games, you know things like you know hill climb racing which are available now in the Windows Store. You know as you can see I'm playing it here.
once it loads, you'll see that there are quite a few games to try just on the Windows Store here. Again, this loading screen sort of, you know, gives you an idea of how powerful this laptop is or maybe how not powerful this laptop is. <laughs> but, you know, saying that I wouldn't really try even with some of the more modern 3D games like Asphalt 8. You know, it's just not, this is not a gaming laptop, this is a basic, basic laptop for basic tasks. So to answer the question that I asked at the start, is it worth your money? Well, that depends on what you need it for, really. I mean, if you buy it, expecting to be able to do basic things on it from, as I said, uh, word processing, uh, watching some YouTube, some web browsing, uh, even a bit of Photoshop, a few basic games, I don't think you'll be disappointed. I think every part of this laptop seems to work. There's no particular flaw that it has. The build quality is okay. You know, the trackpad, keyboard, etc. works fine. The screen is bright enough. It, the color reproduction is just okay. There's nothing to complain about. And as I said, when you look at the price, it being so low, it's very, very hard to complain. If you need a basic laptop that works, I'd probably go for this one, especially, you know, taking into account the price. Thanks for watching, and if you found it at all helpful, I'd love you to drop a like and subscribe. Thanks again, and bye-bye.